Okay, I'm Pam Dutzman, and I have slide envy. So <laughs> I'm going to go really fast through mine. Um, when we think of food policy, which is what I'm going to be talking about today, it's really kind of confusing because we have this big you know, policy from the government that um, controls a lot of things, all the way down to local food policies, like food safety policies, like we've been talking about today. And sometimes they get so convoluted and overlapping and coming from so many different areas that they can even cancel each other out, even though they're good and you know, well-intentioned. And so let me give an example. Like if we want to, as a community, source more um, local fresh fruits and vegetables into the corner convenience store, we want to make that more healthy. Well, that's sort of canceled out by some of the high-level federal policies that really drive processed foods into that uh, food market to make it more profitable. So when we talk about food policy, really it's all those sets of policies and laws that affect our food from farm to fork. And that's what ends up on our grocery store shelves. Most of this does, we think, you know, as we think about it, it comes from the federal level. You think of nutrition education programs and all things like that. Um, it gets really confusing because there's so many places at the federal level, so many offices and agencies that overlap and they don't even know whose job it is to do some of this stuff. But states also have a role in food policy and they can decide to take that on for themselves for the state or they can allow the local level to do that as well. And that's what Missouri does. It gives some power to the local level. So we're going to be talking about local food policies and how important they are. One such example would be to make some policies to protect farmers markets, zoning laws so that they have the optimum location to locate and they don't have to deal with that every year. Allowing EBT policies um, so that low-income folks can come and shop there as well. Another uh, food policy that is important for local governments to drive better nutrition and physical activity in the, in the city or the county would be to form community garden ordinances and policies. And these can protect those, the creation of those, the maintenance of those, and sustain those long term. Other examples of good local food policy would be to get healthier food in schools, um, things like vending machines, school gardens, farm to school programs, making sure that the bus actually does go to the grocery stores, which is a problem we have here in Springfield. Bringing maybe grocers to those underserved areas so that those low-income folks can access those, access those healthy foods. Food policy councils can really help with this. That's a unique uh, forum for a diverse uh, group of stakeholders that come together and focus on that given community, whether it's city, county, state, whatever it may be, to help look at those particular um, issues and create policies to help. And so in April 2013, the Ozark Regional Food Policy Council was formed with a diverse group of stakeholders to look at kind of creating um, an environment that would support healthy food and access to healthy food for every single member of the Southwest Missouri um, so that they can actually you know, have a secure um, source of food every single day. This is really important for this area as has been mentioned because we're known for doing that. We, you know, 100 years ago, less than 100 years ago, we raised all our own food. Small farms were very profitable. Um, it was sold and eaten locally. And this quote, Springfield is probably as well supplied with fresh vegetables than any other city in the nation, um, was the quote back then. So where are we now? We thought the best place for good policy is to look at where we are now and do a food system assessment. And so we formed five communities, strong communities, healthy people, sustainable ecosystems, vibrant farms, and thriving local economies. And those, that's where we started to look at this. The results of that assessment showed that we really have a lack of good food here in southwest Missouri. <coughs> we have 140,000 people who do not know, do not have a secure source of food the next day. Mm -hmm. um, 50,000 of those are kids. 88% mm -hmm. of adults do not have enough fruits and vegetables to eat. And less than 2% of our food is produced locally. So looking at what we can build on and what, we're, what we can do going ahead, we took this assessment and created 12 key policy recommendations to support this goal that others have, have talked about today of um, sourcing 20% of our food from what is grown locally here in Southwest Missouri. And we, we created an executive summary that you have in your packet that has all of those 12 key recommendations. Some of the things we've talked about in those key recommendations are policies that do help school systems form uh, policies that you know, increase gardens and that would mean policies in those school districts to help do that, to help with farmers markets take um, or allow SNAP benefits to, to be used at the farmers markets. Food hubs, that's been covered today, but that was one of the, our recommendations. 
we understand that we have this kind of black hole there in the middle of small producers and some big markets, and how is that going to happen? And so that void is something we need to look at and what kind of policies can help with that. One other policy that will actually help with that is to kind of help look at these farmers and, tr and producers and help give them the skills and the training needed to, s to ramp up and give the kind of quality food that these big markets are needing, because that's not something that's been happening in a long time. So those workshops are on the table and actually planned and scheduled and going on as we speak. Another thing that we wanted to look at was improving access and affordability of healthy foods in our food deserts. And we have some communities in Springfield, in urban Springfield, that are actually qualified as food deserts. And so we're looking at this, and these are some pictures of, um, going back since, since this last March, of us meeting as a community and trying to figure out how to make sustainable change in those urban communities. Um, so people, organizations within our community are taking note using some of our language. This is the field guide for the city of Springfield saying that they too, kind of mirroring some of our language, uh, that we should source 20% of our food from local. They realize it's gonna make healthier communities, um, drive economic development and, and things like that. This is July of this year. We met in one, of those urban in one of those urban food deserts downtown. This is mainly talking about community gardens that day. And the city, I think there were six people from the city of Springfield present, and they said, you know, just go ahead and move forward. We don't have these policies, but whenever you come up against a barrier, <coughs> excuse me, I'm having a hard time speaking, um, we're going to, we're gonna help you. We're gonna fix it. We're gonna you know, give us the recommendation and we'll help you. So we've had so much success. And what has really started with this community conversation is um, building a new identity for Springfield that we think is going to look like a whole different food system here in just, I mean, it already does, in 18 months. And it's just moving further and further down that path. So we're thrilled to be a part of it. Thank you.